Uh, welcome to the courses part of Pattern Lab. Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Illustrator when it comes, sorry, how to use Adobe Illustrator with our ePatterns, how to A, set up your document and how to use the various tools. If you're not familiar with Adobe Illustrator, then this is definitely the tutorial for you. It'll show you how to get the very most out of that platform when it comes to editing your files or your ePatterns. So, first of all, um, Adobe Illustrator, you can down, if you're not familiar with it, you can download this as a trial for 15 days for free and then after that it'll cost you roughly £15 a month as a subscription. Um, we recommend using Adobe Illustrator simply because it has the most tools when it comes to editing your your patterns or your e-patterns. And to show you how to use this platform I'm simply going to download a basic bodice block as an e-pattern. Now if you haven't got this far and you haven't actually created let's say a profile, added measurements and actually started to build your basic block then I recommend going to the profiles page and watching um, our video tutorial which explains how to let's say create a profile and then populate it with measurements using one of three different techniques in Pattern Lab and then once you've completed that tutorial go to the lab page and then watch so in the, using this little help icon here you can then watch our lab tutorial which explains how you then use your profile and measurements to then build a basic block which you can then download as an e-pattern or as a multi-page PDF but first of all I'm simply gonna so obviously follow those tutorials and explain how you actually create these blocks and how you can download it as a PDF or a e-pattern. So the block that I'm going to be using to uh, just to show you how to play around with Illustrator, it doesn't really matter. Let's just go for a bodice, close fit, go for front no seam, classic fit, we go for back, seam, double sleeve. We're not going to be using the sleeve so it doesn't necessarily matter. We can just untick those. I'm then going to go to download and then you should be presented with your pattern to download as an e-pattern or as a PDF download. So I'm simply going to download my e-pattern, click, and this should allow you to save it on your desktop. We already have one saved, so let's just get rid of that. And then let's just name this basic bodice block. So I'm just going to click save. Now this is an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphics file, uh, which is basically something that Adobe Illustrator will edit. <coughs> so let's just click save to desktop. I'm then going to navigate off of the lab. I'm going to, here's my block, save it somewhere safe so you know where it is. I'm then going to simply click and drag it onto the AI icon or open it in Adobe Illustrator. So this is a block that we've downloaded from the site. It's the basic block which comes with the simple dart manipulation or standard dart manipulation. So how do you use Adobe Illustrator? First of all, we're going to show you how to set up your document so that you can use either centimeters or inches. This document is full size, which means that the image in front of you is an actual full size pattern. The great thing about digital pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator is that if you do not have a large area to work in, like a large studio, you can do all of this from your laptop or your home computer, and it's still full size, which is fantastic. Also, you can save your patterns. You don't have to put them into folders, leave them strewn about your house. You can save them into little flash drives, take them with you, you can share them with friends, it's a really wonderful digital pattern cutting is a really wonderful thing that uh, you can do a lot with. Anyway, we can explain about that a little bit later on. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to set your document up. So obviously I'm working in centimeters because I'm based in the UK. And to get your rulers up, simply with your keyboard, simply hit Control and R, and this will bring up this little tab. Uh, and it's on the very top and on the very left hand side. As you can see this is full size, we have 0 to 55 centimeters. If you don't want to use your shortcuts you can go view and then go to rulers and then this should say show rulers. So let's just hide them. View, rulers, show rulers. If for some reason this is in a different format, whether it be pixels, points, centimeters, inches, you can select which type of unit you want to use simply by clicking command or right clicking and then you can choose from millimeters, inches, or centimeters. Obviously, I would recommend either using inches if you're in America, or centimeters. I use centimeters. So I'm just going to click. So that's the first part of setting up our document. Next, I want to find our, uh, what do we call it, our document information. So let's go to Window, scroll down, and you'll see Document Info. Click on this, and a little box will appear somewhere on the right-hand side of your screen. 
You want to make sure you keep this open at all times. What this does is it gives you information when it comes to measuring lines. So let's just click drop down. Make sure that objects is selected. Normally it's on documents. So let's click objects. And the reason why is let's say we want to measure a point from here to here. As you can see, it pops up and it gives you 8.435 centimeters. So this is a very, very handy tool when it comes to measuring. Think of it as your ruler uh, when it comes to, let's say, paper pattern cutting or physical pattern cutting. So let's just delete that line. Okay, so next, what we need to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about some of the various tools we use when it comes to pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator. You won't need to know all of these. Possibly the most important ones are rotation, scissors, uh, direct selection tool and selection tool <clears throat> and obviously possibly lines and add or play with anchor points and I'll go through each one individually so first of all the selection tool which is shortcut V on your keyboard press V and you can see it's selected this allows you to select objects that are grouped so an object that is grouped you can see that all of these individual elements <clears throat> are locked together, they are grouped. Uh, the way to group an object or to ungroup an object is to go to Object, Ungroup, or Group. Okay, So the Large Selection tool allows you to move large objects that are grouped, and it's very important to, let's say, group and ungroup objects because it keeps your workspace clean. Next we have the Small Selection tool, or the Direct Selection tool, which is A on your keyboard. This allows you to select individual elements within grouped elements, if that makes sense. So I can literally select any one of these just by clicking. Whereas if I use the big selection tool, I would be selecting all of it. So this allows you more detailed access and you can play around with your pattern. I wouldn't recommend doing that because it will break it, but it allows you to play with different elements. Okay, so next we have the line tool. So the line tool allows you to draw. It's like your measuring tool. It allows you to draw between point to point, and obviously that is displayed here. Also, let's just delete these. That's it. Uh, next we have rotation tool, and I'll come to this a little bit later, or in more detail later on. So let's just create an object. If I click rotate, I can find a point to rotate around, and then that object will rotate around that point, which is quite cool, especially when it comes to opening and closing darts. An example of this very quickly, and there's a tutorial for this, is to simply cut this item or this part of your pattern and then using the rotation tool click and then we can close that block or that pattern and then we have a new dart manipulation okay so the rotation tool is very very handy don't worry about this too much I'm going to cover this in a later tutorial which is called dart manipulations let's just go back Okay, so what do we have next? Um, it's also important to note you have lines and fill. So obviously as you can see this is a line and this is a fill. So when it comes to changing the line color and the fill, if you simply select using your small selection tool and then you go to your fill, you can then pick any color you wish. And let's just fill this with a nice Pattern Lab ice blue just to make it stand out from our background. And we can also do the same to the other side. Let's just make it a nice pattern lab blue. Next, if you want to change the line color, simply select. And here, you can see you have the fill, which is what we just changed. Then you have the stroke. If you double click, it'll bring it to the front and it'll also open up your color picker. And now let's we can choose, I don't know, let's go for red. It's a pretty dramatic color, but you can see it creates a bit more highlight to your block. So this just gives you a few more options when it comes to playing around. If you're maybe a little bit hard of sight or you just want to change these colors, you can do that in this way. So let's just take that back to black. Okay. Also, you can uh, actually change the thickness of your lines by simply navigating over to the stroke. If for some reason you can't see stroke in your right hand column, you can go to window and this will give you all of the tools in the right and left column that you can select from. So here we have stroke. Okay, That's now displaying. I already have it here because it's part of saved in my workspace. So let's just click stroke. Sorry, first of all let's select the item and then let's change the stroke to let's make it three points. See, that gives us a really very very strong outline. Okay, Let's change this to maybe one point. So you can experiment. It depends how bold you want your 
your patterns to be. Uh, another thing you can do if you want to keep these the same, if you want, if you change one to let's say one point and have a fill of that blue, you might not be able to get the same fill as you had last time or even the same uh, weight for your line. So one way of doing it is selecting the item you want to change using the small selection tool just by clicking on it. You can then go to this little tool here called the eyedropper tool. This simply takes the attributes of um, whatever it is that you're clicking on. So if I click here, it then takes the line width and the color of the fill. So it's quite a nifty tool when it comes to changing things, site, not site-wide, but pattern-wide. So for example, this is maybe pink, and we have a line fill of you know really big. I can then select these two items. Yeah? And then I can simply go to my dropper tool, click, and then drop a tool, click. Okay. Uh, a few other things to mention, which are nice little shortcuts, because obviously uh, we want to go back, we don't want this. You can go edit, undo, which will take you back. Edit, undo, edit, undo. Or you can hit control Z, which will take, keep hitting control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, or command Z on your Mac and you can go forwards and backwards. If you hit control shift z you can go forwards. Okay, I'm just simply hitting shift control z many times. Or to go back, control z, back, 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 back. Once again, you can redo stroke, the same as see, shift command z, control z. Okay, really nice and simple. Uh, another thing to mention when it comes to moving around, you can probably see that I'm, I've got quite a lot of flexibility here when it comes to moving. Uh, if you hold down the space key on your keyboard and then click and drag it allows you to move the pattern around your screen very easily this is important when it comes to doing detailed work I mean if I was to sit here and try and use the scroll it would take me forever I mean look you can see how how much of a uh, how can time consuming this is so you using your space key you can click and drag and move that pattern around uh, also you might have seen that I've zoomed in and out okay you can also zoom in and out of your pattern using the command or control minus and plus. Minus to zoom out, plus to zoom in. So these are very, very strong tools when it comes to navigating your pattern using the space to drag and then the control plus and control minus to zoom in and out. Okay, great when it comes to detail work. So what else can I say? Okay, let's talk a little bit more about grouping. So for example, this is a pattern and these elements are grouped. Now obviously before I explain that you can object ungroup Okay, so if I ungroup that, you can see that now this title here and this is now separate. And even our points, these darts, not darts, sorry, these these registration points for our sleeve, i.e. where we set the sleeve in, this is now separate when we come to using our big selection tool. So you can ungroup items and group them. It's completely up to you, and it depends how you want to use your pattern. To group items, you can simply click. And also let's say we want to we want to group we want to make sure that these little points always stay with us or always located in the same position. You can either click and drag over the points that you want to group and then simply go object group or and we'll come back to why that's done that in a minute. Let's go back, control Z. Or you can queue up selections. So for example I want to select this and then if I hold down the shift key I can then select that one point. Sorry, excuse me. I could click I can then hold down the shift key, select that little point, select that little point. I can even select that as well. Okay, or I can, let's say, select this. I can group these objects. All I go is go object and then group. So to queue up or to select multiple items to then group, all you do is simply, let's go back, select, hold down the shift key, queue up that selection, holding down the shift key still, Select, and then let's also select this piece. If I now remove the selection, if I now remove the shift key, or I, I no longer depress the, if I no longer press the shift key and I click on something, I'll lose those selections. So always make sure you hold down your shift key. I'm going to be running through the as I go along. I'm going to run through these with each tutorial, so you over time will become accustomed to using these tools. But this is just a nice little overview, which you can then run through and practice at home, so you get the the most out of uh, Illustrator. So. Uh, yeah, let's just simply select all of this and then group it so we uh, we have it all as one item. Okay, same with this. This is luckily already grouped. You can also, if you don't, 
if you have a lot of things to group or you have a you can use shortcuts you don't have to go to object and group you see here it always lists the shortcut on the right hand side so I can simply just go right so I'm gonna go shift control G which will ungroup see or shift G which will then group so always have a look for your see shift um, sorry command group and then shift command group okay shortcuts are really handy when it comes to doing things quickly but play around with them so I think that's pretty much everything when it comes to navigating and playing around with the lab and selecting items um, obviously we've shown you how to cut okay so as I said this is just a very very brief introduction I'm not going to manipulate my pattern at all in this tutorial it's just give you a little bit of an understanding of how to use Adobe Illustrator uh, which is quite fun. Also you can save your document file just go to save this overwrites your existing document or save as allows you to create a brand new copy and you can save it on the desktop or with your existing block so let's go um, blue fill there we go let's just click save and then we have a new one this is all pretty much simple stuff you should be able to have this concept using other programs uh, what else can we explain I think that's pretty much it for now uh, yeah, okay. So if you have any questions or queries um, about any of this, please obviously review the tutorial over and over and over again until you become um, better at using Adobe Illustrator, unless of course you're a seasoned pro. If so, then skip on to our next tutorial. The next tutorial is going to be about how to actually manipulate these blocks and start doing dart manipulations. This is the very, very basics of pattern cutting, but uh, it's really good fun. And once we start getting into it, you'll start to realize how powerful Adobe Illustrator is as a software platform. Okay.